Welcome back everybody, I'm Bonnie Campbell with projectstrong.ca and here we are ready to start workout number 17. Um, feel free to check out my blog at projectstrong.ca to see more about uh, what we do with strength training with older adults. And so here we are, we're going to get going with our warm up. So we're going to start with 10 squats. So our feet for our squats are set just outside our shoulders. And we're going to try and keep our toes pointing straight ahead. Uh, the next thing we're going to think about is that nice tall spine. Get our alignment in order, get our ribs stacked over our hips, and then tighten up the belly. We could put our hands out for counterbalance. And the movement starts with the hip going back as our knees go out. Remember, we don't want our knees shooting way out in front of our toes. We don't want our knees collapsing in. So we want to try and think about knees out, vertical shin as much as possible, and back up. And we're going to squat to your pain-free depth. For some of you, that might be a much smaller depth, and that's okay. The rest of you who don't get pain, you're just going to sort of work through those 10 squats, seeing if you can get lower each time, maintaining that tight belly, neutral spine in the back, and keeping the chest up as much as possible. We want to avoid getting into this position for our squats. That's more of a hip hinge, so we want to keep that chest up and hips go down. So we'll do 10 squats. Once we've done those, we'll come over, see if you can find a spot like a door jam in your home or in my case, I'm gonna use um, the railing on my staircase. I'm gonna put my hands up just a little bit above my shoulders, and they're gonna um, be my counter support. I'm gonna then stand, so we're gonna do five Hawaiian squats. I'm gonna stand on one leg, I'm gonna take my other leg and place it just above my knee. So from here, with that knee, Flexing out to the outside, I'm going to lower my hips down. So two things happen here. When my hands are still holding in that same spot, as I lower my hips down, I get a stretch through that lat and into my back, preparing me to go overhead today. And then I also get a little bit of that nice hip stretch, glute stretch, as I lower down. And we're lowering down to our pain-free depth, and then we come back up. And we're going to do five on one leg. Just going to your range of motion. So we do five, working through that, feeling that stretch, keeping that spine tall and the belly tight. We don't want to get into an arching back or a rounding back as we do this, just letting those hips sink down. So once you've done five on one leg, then you will switch and do five on the other. So we're in that standing up place, hands just above our shoulders, roughly face height, foot to our other knee, just on top or above the knee, and we sink down. And many of you will find one hip is tighter than the other. And for me, it's definitely this side. This is my tight hip. So we're doing five of these. And once we've completed five of these, we're going to go to a nice flat wall and we're going to work on our wall push-ups. So I'm going to use the wall here. I'm going to place my hands just outside my shoulders and slightly above my shoulders onto the wall. Then I'm going to take one small step back with my feet. I can be on my toes. I want to think about relaxing my shoulders down my spine. I don't want my shoulders way up here around my ears. I want to think about relaxing my shoulders down. I'm not pushing them down, but I'm relaxing them down. I've created a nice plank with my body, tight belly, tight glutes, and then I'm going to lower myself towards the wall as much as I can and push myself back up. You notice that my elbows are pointing towards the floor. That helps me work into my back a little bit more. So we're going to do 10 of those wall push-ups. And once we've done 10 of these, so I'm going to stop there. You're going to finish your 10. We're going to do one last shoulder warm-up exercise, and it's our YWTs. So the first position, we're going to take our hands, so the thumb 
is pointing back. So the first thing I'm going to get you to do is put your arms up into that Y position and I want you to reach up with your shoulders and your arms in that Y position. You notice my shoulders are up by my ears and now I want you to relax them down. And I want you to shrug them up by your ears one more time and relax them down. We're going to do that one more time. Now this is the position we don't want to be in and we're going to relax our shoulders down. That's the position we want to be in. So I just took us through that shrug so that we can feel what our shoulders should be like and what they should not be like. So now from here, some of you may stay in this upright position. Make sure ribs are stacked over hips and the belly is tight. And I'm going to turn to the side and we're, our thumbs are still pointing behind us. And we're just going to reach back for five. So I'm just gently pulling my arms back. So those shoulder blades are gliding around my rib cage. I'm going to do five of those. If this is easy for you in this upright position, then we can hinge over into this position, slightly unlock the knees, and now I've got a little bit more gravity to work against, so it makes it a little bit more challenging for us. So you choose which position you want to be in. So the hinged over position is going to be a little harder, this position is going to be a little easier. So that's our Y. So once we've completed five, we're then going to go to our W position. Thumb is still pointing behind us, but now I've got a W going on. So what it's going to look like, I'm going to turn to the side. So thumbs are pointing back. My alignment is set, tight belly, and I'm just bringing those shoulder blades around my back. My shoulders are not up here by my ears. They're relaxed down, gliding across my rib cage. So I'm going to do five in the W position. Again, we can make that harder, working against a little bit more gravity by hinging over. So five there if you choose. Then the last one is T. So it's going to be palm up, thumb back, same thing. Feel those shoulder blades gliding around the back. We're not packing our shoulders or squeezing, we're focusing on gliding. We're focusing on that range of motion. Again, we can make this a little harder through the hinge. And now we're working against gravity a little bit more. So five in each of those positions. And that's our warm up for today. Okay, for our strength focus today, we are going to do two exercises. We're going to work on that squat. We're going to load the squat in either a goblet squat or a bear hug squat. Um, and then we're going to alternate that with a shoulder press or a shoulder to overhead, whatever that motion is going to be like for you. So let's talk about our squat and how we can load this today. So with our two exercises, we're alternating between the squat and the shoulder press, giving ourselves one to two minutes of rest between the two sets of exercises. So with our squat, we've got a lot of different ways we can load our squat. We're going to do um, eight to 10 reps each time we work on our squat. So we can start with a relatively light load and then progressively load that if we can, if we've got something we can load up. So that's what the backpack and the bucket do for us. We can add extra load into these two devices to increase our load with each subsequent set. Okay, so um, in here I've got a windshield wiper jug. So if I'm using a backpack, I'm gonna bring it up to my chest get into my squat stance. I'm going to hug the backpack, hence the, the why I'm calling it a bear hug squat. And then I'm just going to go through my squat the same way I did in my warm up. Tight belly, tall spine, trying to keep my chest up as much as I can. So I can load up that backpack if this was light on my first set, then I can add another jug to it or books or cans. My other option, if you don't have a backpack, we can use a bucket and we can load it up. We know the secret, we can load it up with rice, 
have any canned goods, our water jug if we so choose. So we stand with our feet in between it, lower down in that sumo stance, bring it up to our chest, give it a nice hug, and now we're gonna do eight to 10 squats, okay? So that's the mechanics for our goblet squat or our bear hug squat, okay? Make sure when we put it down, flat back, hinge down, and we can set that down. So we are going to progressively load that, if we can, to that seven or eight out of 10, keeping in mind that we're doing eight to 10 reps today. And we're going with those higher rep schemes than we typically have done in the gym, partly because we can't get the same load at home. We don't have that barbell that we can load up the same way we might be able to in the gym. So we're increasing our rep scheme to help us to maintain our strength and we're taking advantage of working a little bit more muscular endurance than straight up muscular strength with these exercises today. So the other exercise that we're alternating our goblet squat with is our shoulder press or shoulder to overhead. So I know some of you have like, um, have dumbbells at home. Many of you have very light ones. So again, with our shoulder press, we're doing a rep scheme of eight to 10 reps. Um, we'll see if we can get to that seven or eight out of 10. If all you have is really light weights and you're finding it difficult to get that rate of perceived exertion to that seven or eight, then feel free to increase your rep scheme to 15, but no more than 15, 15 is plenty. So with our, our shoulder to overhead, we're gonna bring those weights to our shoulders. Here we wanna make sure that we're maintaining that neutral alignment, nice tall spine, rib over hip, and brace the belly. So we don't wanna get into this arching position to get the weights up that we often see. If we end up like this, then we need to decrease the weight or decrease our reps, okay? So we're just going to aim to press straight overhead. Now I know some of you that straight overhead position does not always happen and you're a little bit more out here and that's okay. You're gonna go with a load that you feel comfortable with. For some of you where you've got one bad shoulder or one weak shoulder, you don't have to do two weights um, and I don't want you to do two separate weights, two different um, loads. I would rather you go to one load and work one load that is shared by both shoulders, whatever the weaker shoulder will tolerate. So now you're getting a little bit more balance between the two shoulders and you're not over training one end and keeping the other one too light. So that is our shoulder press today. So you're alternating eight to 10 reps of goblet squat, rest one to two minutes, eight to 10 reps of your shoulder to overhead, rest one to two minutes, four sets through. And that's your strength focus for today. Okay, so now we're into our conditioning workout. So the purpose of this workout today is to get you moving quickly at a steady pace. So for some of you, the first exercise, the burpee, is quite a challenging exercise. So if you find that particularly challenging and it's, it's very demanding for you, then you're going to do six rounds of this workout today. Those of you who don't find that burpee as demanding and you don't struggle as much to get up off the floor and you're moving efficiently, then you're going to do eight rounds. So that's where the, the people who are doing eight rounds are people who move quickly through that burpee and it doesn't take you a lot of time. For those of us where it takes us a long time to get up off the ground, we're, we're doing six rounds. So our reps for today, we're doing one burpee, five squats, body weight squats, so we don't need to worry about load, and then 10 step ups. So you're gonna wanna find a staircase in your home if you can. I've just brought in my step here for demonstration purposes. So let's just review our burpee, our two main ways of doing our burpee. So our first burpee is a lunge style burpee. And by all means, you can use a chair if you need it. I'll slide it this way. 
You can use a chair or a couch or a footstool if you need that support to get down. So our first option is we step back down into a lunge, knee to the ground, the other knee to the ground, get our hands to the ground, walk our hands out, lower ourselves down. For some of you, lowering yourself down chest to the floor will be particularly difficult. So you can just go to that plank hold instead of lowering all the way down. So then once we've lowered ourselves down, if we're going that way, we're gonna push our hips back, walk our hands into our knees, come back into that lunge, and stand up. So that's one of our options on the burpee. The other option is that slightly wider stance and we go down into a squat, thinking about those knees. Make sure those knees stay out. Lean forward, get our hands to the ground, and then we can walk our hands and feet out. There's the plank that some of you might choose to stop at, and then you're gonna walk yourself back up. Or some of you will drop down, push your hips back, step one foot up onto your toes, the other foot up onto your toes, and push yourself back up to stand. Those are our two main options. Most of you know how you can scale within that. Some of you are still at the chair place where you're gonna stand close to the chair. You're gonna hinge your hip over, put your hands on the chair. You're gonna walk your feet out into that plank. You're gonna see if you can lower yourself down a little bit, push yourself back up, step your feet back in and stand up. So there's a few options for you on your burpee for today. So after you've done one burpee, then you're going to do five of those body weight squats, moving quickly through the motion. Then once you've done five of those, you'll just go to your step and you're stepping up and down 10 times. Once you're done that, you're right back to the burpee. So we're going through six to eight rounds of that at that steady pace. Moving quickly, heart rate should come up to basically a seven or eight out of 10. If you feel like it's shooting up to a nine, make sure you take a rest or you slow down. And that is your workout for today. Okay, uh, today I have a little mobility piece for you guys to do before we finish off. So you're gonna find a chair. Um, a firm chair is a little bit better than a couch and you wanna get your bottom to the edge of the chair so that we can have our hips pivot um, from that edge a little bit better. So we're gonna extend one foot out in front and what we're gonna think about is that toe. We're gonna to flex that toe up and where we should be feeling that stretch is in the back calf. So we wanna hold this position 30 seconds to a minute, just feeling that stretch. You can play around a little bit with that toe if you want to, and we're gonna hang out there for about 30 seconds in that calf stretch, just stretching that calf. Especially for those of us who've been out doing those walks or little jog runs that we've been trying to get um, when we're not doing our strength work every day, we need to make sure we spend some, some time and attention stretching out our calves. So the next thing we're gonna do, we can let that calf relax. We're gonna make sure we're in that nice tall spine, neutral alignment, no big curve in that lumbar spine. From here, we're gonna find our hip bones and we're gonna pivot from our hip, keeping that back flat. We don't wanna round the back over through this or we'll miss the stretch. So here, we should be feeling that stretch in the hamstring. So, that again, we're gonna spend 30 seconds to a minute in this position. And you notice we don't have to um, reach really low. It's not about reaching really low. It's about making sure we're getting that stretch there. Rounding our back, tips our pelvis back in the other direction and it turns off the hamstring stretch. Sorry about that little technical difficulty. So as I was saying, we don't wanna be rounded through. We wanna be sitting tall flat back over to feel that hamstring, okay? So, next piece. Once we've spent 30 seconds in that position stretching the hamstring, we're gonna take the opposite foot. This leg is gonna stay extended. We're gonna take that opposite foot, just place it over the top of that knee. Now we're gonna slide the heel that's on the floor towards our bottom. 
And in this position, we should now be feeling a stretch in the opposite hip to the leg that we have been stretching. So we're just gonna hang out here for 20 to 30 seconds. So anybody who's had a hip replacement who's a little unsure about getting into this position, you are just gonna draw that knee to chest, sitting tall, drawing that knee to chest. But the rest of us can be out here and we can let that knee relax out. We can even um, pulse it up and down a little bit, but we're gonna hang out in this position for 30 seconds to a minute and then we're gonna repeat the whole process on the other leg. And that's it for today. Keep at it, and we'll see you next time.